y'all. Come on out here, man. We're about to get this thing started. Y'all know how we do it out here, right? Where we going, man? Where we going? I don't know where we are. 17th Street, maybe? And um, I found a little hole. It's interesting. So I kind of want to point it out. If you look right here, you can see there's a sandbar that goes out right there. And that actually goes out all the way over there. And all this area here is actually deep water. And I know that because I'm in my bathing suit and I, I walked out and I could walk out all the way out there and it's about ankles deep. But if I walked out right here, all of a sudden it was up to my waist and then I got back up to my ankles. So I just got my line and I'm just dropping it really right there. You can kind of see the waves coming up there and then there's this little spot in between and then the waves crashing again there. And so that's kind of where I'm dropping it. And uh, caught a mullet, nothing too exciting. It's probably a little um, shallower now than I want it to be, but uh, we'll see what happens as the tide goes out and we'll take another look then at Then I got a mullet, so here we go. He's going to swim right there. Let me give a good look at him, see what he's doing. He's not happy. He wants to get back out. Let me back out in the water. All right, we're going to we'll take him back off the hook and uh, we'll let him back out. But again, that was just right there, really close to the shore. Uh, it's not huge, so probably not going to make dinner out of him, but... I think I'm fishing with today. Fish. I've got kind of a Carolina rig set up here. I've got um, an egg sinker, it's about a one ounce. It's braid on my line here, and it's going down to a swivel, which is covered in sand, and then it's going out to some mono line, and which is going down to a hook uh, with another little bead on there, just for fun. Um, and what I like and don't like about it is, um, say the fish comes along and he picks up my bait and he runs with it, the sinker stays there, and he can he can go out there. And the sinker stays there, so it might be a minute or two before I actually feel him tugging on that, because I've got no way to stop it. It just could go all the way up for all my line. And so, it's actually kind of challenging. Um, if I had a, just a double drop rig, you know, the weight would be on the bottom, the hooks would be up here, and if you pulled on it, I'd feel it, like, right away, because that, the weight, you know, the triangle weight or whatever I had on there would keep it, keep it down there at the bottom. But, so this is a little more challenging, I'm finding. All right, number three, another whiting. Uh, Nothing to write home about, you know, if I wanted to keep him for shark bait, it would probably be good for that, but not going to make a fish taco. You're not even half a taco, buddy. You're going back in. Bye, whiting. I'm going to show you how I um, bait a hook uh, with shrimp. I don't bait it like that. Um, that's a whole shrimp on there. It's probably too much. What's going to happen is a whiting or a croaker is going to come along, and he's going to bite it here, and he's going to pull it, and he's going to pull it off, and he's going to come get the other piece, and he's going to pull it, and it's going to be gone. And that's it. So that's how I don't um, do my hooks. But instead, what I do is I think about it more like uh, freshwater fishing. And I'll just use this piece that was broken off. Um, there's a curve in the hook, and there's a curve in the shrimp. So I think about it sort of like... Um, a, like if I was doing a worm on a hook, I'm going to put it through there and out the bottom. Let me stop the camera. Watch so how I do it. You can see the hook, it's going in, and you can see the points just at the point right there. It's coming out. I can actually touch it with my finger and feel it. Um, then there's some debate, should I leave the shell on? Uh, I think the whiting will come and they will pick at the shell to get it off before they eat it. A uh, croaker do the same thing. So sometimes it just makes sense um, just to peel that skin off. Um, and then you got the fish uh, there. It leaves a little more vulnerable, it's a little softer, so you probably have to change it more often if they don't come to eat it right away. But uh, that's, that's how I do it, and if I'm wrong and you've got a better way to do it, you know, put it in the comments, I'd like to see. Alright, I think my little honey hole dried up here, I haven't caught another one in a few minutes. Uh, you can see the tide's going out, we got the sandbar now is actually real apparent there. And it comes out along there, and I was fishing right in here, um, it was really nice. And you can see, um, like if you look right there, the, wind, the water's washing up and it's just washing right back. So you know those fish are sitting right there, and when that washes back, all these little mud minnow, little minnows and stuff that are in the water here, anything that's on the in the on the surf and the sand is just going to get washed and pulled right in towards that. That's why I was having such luck with those uh, fish right there. But now I think it's getting a little too shallow, so I'm going to cast out where that boat is and see if I can catch the fish they're catching because they're probably having having some good luck. Actually, I'm probably going to cast out now, right? Well, that right beyond those breakers right there. I'm probably just going to waddle out there and just go right beyond those breakers. I think that's probably where the fish have retreated to at this point right now because this is getting real shallow in here. Um, so let's try that.